It's uh, the hour is upon us. We're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, April 2nd, 6 p.m., Fort Valley Utilities Commission um, Zoom teleconference. We thank everybody for joining us um, this evening. And um, as we're trying something new and different, as we say, drastic times brings about drastic measures. So we're going to overcome all those things. And I thank all the commissioners for joining us, our attorneys, and all those that are live. Um, viewing the slide, we thank you for joining us uh, as we try to um, make make decisions to help our citizens, our community, our friends, our neighbors, and here here in uh, Fort Valley, Peach County. Um, if you would, um, Dr. Johnson, would you say a word of prayer for us, right quick, so we can uh, start this meeting off with the Lord's blessings? Yes. Oh God, as we come before you we recognize that you're in control. Lord, we know that all things of thee and of thine own, you give to us. So we, we just plead the blood of Jesus over every nation and over each and every city in the United States and across the world. As we deal with this virus, help us not to be uh, afraid or fearful but help us to use our faith, even as we conduct the business of the Valley. So Lord, we thank you for the faith you have given us, and we bless your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Commissioner Johnson. We'd like to thank everybody. Thank everybody for joining us. Uh, Clay, Jason, uh, General Manager, Miss Penny, Miss Martha, uh, Ms. Kathy, thank everybody for joining us here on this. Um, we're going to try and move forward with our printed agenda. I trust you all have received electronically your agendas. And um, if you would, um, um, Mr. Mr. Mims, if you would like to go over some, go over these items and bring these forward to us, um, our agenda items, the COVID-19 customer utility relief funding and, and kind of go over that. Yes, sir. Um, good evening to everyone. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, you know, we're dealing with some unprecedented times and, and, and because of all that's going on across the country now, we clearly recognize that our citizens have been impacted financially um, by all that's occurring and will continue to be, I would suspect, for a few more months now. And because of that, the staff and I spent some considerable time this week thinking about a, a way that we could help offset some of that cost for our citizens. Um, I passed on some information to uh, you as commissioners on yesterday for you to consider us um, putting together a, um, a package to fund um, an assistance program for our, our customers and rate payers uh, at a tune of $240,000. We've had some conversations with the uh, Middle Georgia Community Action Agency about helping us facilitate that as a third party, as well as we're reaching out to uh, DFACs through our own um, CARES program. Um, we've uh, provided you guys with some, some guidelines, uh, and those are guidelines that, that uh, the CARES program is currently operating by uh, I think we tweaked one or two of those items to ensure that um, these funds would be available to uh, as many people as possible. Um, we took a look at how we could potentially fund this and we identified a source of funding for um, the first two initiatives on your agenda, um, uh, bringing those dollars in from the 2018 uh, MEAG year-end settlement. Um, which uh, totals uh, approximately $280,000, um, 240 of which to fund um, um, the first item that we have on the agenda. And, and I'm open and staff's open to any questions you may have uh, about that particular issue. Uh, um, and let me, let me, and let me add, I, excuse me. We did um, uh, run this by our, our legal uh, team, uh, Charles Jones and um, uh, Joel Bentley, and they may have comment before we get into discussion. I do apologize, guys. 
Let me let me interrupt for just a second. Our live stream uh, just went out. I'm restarting it. And it looked like we're it looks like we're back up now. Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Zach. Um, as I was saying, um, we we had some discussions with our our legal counsel, uh, Joel Bentley and Charles Jones, and I'd I'd like to give them an opportunity to weigh in on the. Uh, legality or, or their thoughts or, or if they have any concerns about what we're trying to accomplish here. Val means attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, Joe and I talked about it. Yeah. Uh, Joe and I talked about it. And um, after we learned from Craig what the commission had in mind doing, uh, we have no concerns about the, the uh, utility commission's um, authority to do what they're pledging or, or proposing to do. Um, we will have to work out with uh, the Middle Georgia Action um, Program, uh, probably a, a uh, intergovernmental agreement. Um, but certainly, we don't. We have no concerns about the commission's authority to do this. If this is what you'd like to do, Joe. I think the only other issue that the utility commission had to consider in doing this um, was the benefit to the utility commission from an economic standpoint. Um, it's my position and my recommendation to the Utility Commission that you consider this measure for the economic stability of the customers, the Fort Valley Utility Commission during the declared state of uh, emergency that's unprecedented in the, in the United States, at least during the, the last hundred years. I'm not sure what measures the Utility Commission may or might not have put in place during the Spanish flu academic of um, 1918. But to uh, my knowledge, we've never been faced with this type of situation. Um, and unless you find some means and measures to help ensure the economic stability of your customers, you may not have them in the future. For this reason, I believe that uh, this satisfies the test of concerns that anyone might have with, with respect to the gratuities clause. Charles, I believe you looked at it too. I do, I agree. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Um, any of our commissioners uh, would like to ask any questions of our attorneys or general manager about this um, this uh, fund we're we're trying to do for our community. I'd just like to say that um, you said two hundred and forty thousand dollars is two hundred eighty. This is what. Two hundred eighty. Uh, no, two hundred eighty thousand is the amount. But I'm just saying, we, he said that we're looking uh, for um, to fund the first two hundred and forty thousand dollars. I thought I heard that. That is correct. Two hundred and forty thousand dollars. That is correct. Okay. And there's some additional funds there to fund the hazardous pay for the employees. Um, and, and what, based on our calculations, with the $283,000 that's in the year-end settlement, it should more than cover both of these items. Can I ask this question? Um, is that one of the things that was considered in, um, in, in the last part of the hearing that was canceled, um, that was supposed to have been considered that was was not canceled but postponed until later on that hearing has not been done yet wasn't it wasn't it uh, a part of that year end settlement of 2018 that was supposed to have been in the consideration no ma'am the the judge has already ruled that we have uh, full control over the year end settlement the issues that were going to be heard uh, on march 24th related solely to the utility commission's claim for attorney's fees against the city of Fort Valley and the counter the counter claim that the city filed alleging that it was entitled to attorney's fees. The underlying issues um, between the city and the utility have been resolved. Okay. Ask that because I know it's going to be asked of me. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, any other commissioner, Commissioner Johnson or Honeycutt, would you have any questions for our attorneys um, pertaining to this issue? I don't have any questions, but I would like to say that this is wonderful. 
Utility Commission is looking out for citizens, especially those who are not as fortunate as we are. And we know that we are in uh, a city that has a high population of individuals not afford to sustain themselves over a period of three months without working. And uh, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. And uh, it's a, a very good use of the funds that um, have been proposed. Thank I would you. just like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I would just like to ask, I guess, do, do the staff have any idea how long the proposed funding would hold up? Is this, a, is it, you expect it to be expended in the first month or will it go beyond that or do you know at this time? I, I really don't have an answer to that. We're hoping that it would, would take us out at least 68 weeks because we're hoping in the six, set next round of, of the CARES Act, there may be some funds available to citizens or the commission uh, to offset utility bills for folks. Um, we, we went about this thing knowing that we were gonna have people that needed some sort of help prior to FEMA or the federal government stepping in to help. Um, but it is I hope that it, it would at least get us six weeks out or so. Hey, Craig. Craig. Yes, sir. Well, one thing I think that uh, for, for the public's benefit on the streaming is to explain a little bit about the, the program, you know, these two agencies are both state of Georgia agencies and they are, they are designed to assist um, people in need. And this money is going to go to these two entities and it's going to be directed toward assisting them with payment of their utilities, but for not, uh, for no other purposes is my understanding. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. Um, Martha, are you in a position to give a little bit of background on, um, MGCAA and the um, CARES program, which is currently administered by uh, DFACS. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody kind of remembers, I think back in 08, maybe when the CARES program was a, was first set up. Um, so like um, Joel says, we're just um, proposing that we just add some additional funds to that. Um, so they are it will be uh, ongoing with them. The, the funds actually are deposited into an account at um, Sunmark Bank and the staff at the at DFAX actually um, administers the program. Um, the Middle Georgia Community Action Agency has been around um, forever. I mean, they have an overall budget of about, I think, eight, nine million dollars. Um, have spoken with them and um, they have no problem um, administering it for us. Have um, pretty much told us that they would do it at, you know, without charging us any fees. I've been in direct contact with the executive director there and um, she's really excited about, about the partnership. Um, <clears throat> and they're possibly gonna set up a, a separate 800 number so that people can call in for what I'm thinking they anticipating that they may get a, a lot of calls and maybe don't wanna tie up the main line for it, but they're gonna let us know um, about how the applicants can go about getting in touch with them. But they have a really good record. If some of you all know the Neighborhood Service Center in, in um, Peach, they actually started a, their own cooling um, program. I think she said those applicants, those applications opened up yesterday. So they're already in the process of, of helping some of the elderly. In like that particular program, you have to be 65 or older to qualify for that. So. They've been around for a long time helping people in the community and um, I think it'd be a really good partner um, with you all as far as getting these funds out into the hands of the people who need it. Um, we're also hoping that we'll have this thing standing up and fully functioning within 10 days. Our, it's our intent to, um, to be ready to accept applications and talk with people about it on the 13th of uh, April. Hey, Craig, can I add one other thing? Yes. Um, just for the, the public and also for the board, um, as you may, you may know, I represent the state of Georgia. And one of, the, one of the things that the CARES program does and through the department is they have what they call a PUP program, P-U-P. 
And you might have a family of a mother, a husband, both have been laid off, two or three children faced with um, losing, you know, losing all their power. At that point, the state might have to intervene to seek to place those children in care. This, this program will not only assist with the payment of, of utilities, but it also will assist these families in ways that, that keeps children out of, the, out of the state's care, allows these children to stay in the home with their parents. Uh, this is, this is a, a very good program from that standpoint, from the long-term stability of families with children in your community. Okay, uh, any other discussion on this on this matter with the um, utility relief funding? Um, just one. Um, all of this is is really, really good. It sounds great. And uh, I, you know, commend all of you. But how are we going to uh, come up with the guidelines? How are we uh, going to come up? With the guidelines as to how we're going to make distribution. Uh, I think we provided you guys with the, the guidelines, the, the guidelines that the, or the criteria that folks would have to meet in order to receive funding. Is that what you're talking about, or yes, to receive the funding? Yes, I, yes. Yeah, that should have there should have been a document attached to your packet that kind of lays okay. that out. Okay. I was afraid. I was afraid to go back to my um, to my email. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I left this up on the computer. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm going to have to uh, confess. I, I I didn't go and, and read the package, but I had a general idea as to what it was about. You know, yeah, there there's a document that's attached there. Um, and, and we'll continue to work our way through that over, like I said, the next four or five days. So okay. if there's something that really stands out to you, please, please let us know. And we will, okay. uh, we'll try it. We'll, we'll do our best to address it or, or to rectify the issue. Okay. Sounds good. Cause I had, I have a, um, I also thought about we, you know, getting the flyer, you know, together and believe it or not, I have information here I've written up. But I, I thought about the meter readers, you know, distributing these flyers. But if we're gonna have the bank them call in that eight hundred number, you know, that's fine. That 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 sounds good. But I, I I've I've had several people to call me and say we really and truly would like for one of the commissioners or someone from the utilities commission to address this to the public as opposed to you know i guess doing what we're doing now you know well we, we have we were going to discuss just that that maybe the chairman i don't know it's up to you guys to decide maybe the chairman could um we could work with the chairman to put together a video that we could post out there on social media we were planning to do a press release uh, this afternoon if this is approved and get that out there immediately by way of social media and potentially looking at running an ad in the new local newspaper paper as well to make sure our citizens are aware. Okay, sounds great. What about um, a stuffer in your, in your bill, in the mail out? Too? Are you considering that too? Stuffer? Yes, we are, Mayor. Yes, okay. we are. Good. And while you're on that subject of a stuffer, um, I'm just wondering if it would not be a good idea to send out some things um, that we have uh, that's been caused by the shutdown, if we could get some stuffers in, in too. Do you mind uh, that doing that? Like, for example, our um, public works people that's on the front line picking up the trash we don't. We want. We're not picking up anything but household trash during this, uh, while this ordinance is going on right now, uh, simply because of the spread of, uh, of the virus. Right now, they could pick up uh, household goods in the canister and and dump it. They got a they got a glove on. They got a mask on. They got a face shield and all that kind of stuff. But it's been said that that 
that virus lasts longer on the surface. So if they putting a, a, a dresser out or they putting a, a nightstand out or cooler out or something that they want to throw away, then that involves a person a little bit more intensely with doing that. And so uh, we, we got some flyers, but I'm just wondering about getting them all out everywhere. Um, you know, my well, well, I can reach out to Raphael and we can see, and I'll get with Kathy and we can figure out, you know, how much available space we have there. And I'm certain that we can help you out with that, Mayor. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Mr. Mims. Uh, is there any further discussion? But discussion? Well, I thank you for all bringing it forward. Um, we're looking to move forward with this customer utility relief funding. Uh, we'll need to have a motion to move forward on it. I so move. The move and, and probably sec properly second. And um, we'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor by show of hands, if you can do it. And leave them up so Miss Penny can get the count. I got it. Thanks. All right, thank you. So I uh, thank you commissioners. Um, as this helps our, our, our community, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and, and uh, you know, we need to try to reach out and make it help. I thank you all for, for going forward with this. We're gonna move on to the next item, um, which is the COVID-19 hazard pay for our guys and our girls at the Fort Valley Utility Commission who are still there and um, like I say, our essential workers as, as, as we have them around our city. Um, uh, Mr. Mims, would you like to go further on that discussion with the hazard pay for the commission? Yeah, we're, we're asking that the cons commissioners consider providing our, our, our commission staff with a, an additional $100 per week as we work through um, the next couple of months um, dealing with this, this, this epidemic. Um, a number of other communities I know have adopted uh, uh, various ways of doing this. I think the city of Fort Valley is actually um, has, is, has put something in place. I'm not quite sure how they're calculating it. It may be on an hourly basis. I know that they're doing similar things in Perry and I've heard that they're looking at this same sort of approach in Warner Robins and uh, Byron as well. Um, so we're asking that you you, you consider um, the $100 per week stipend um, uh, over the next eight weeks. Uh, address that, Craig, if we would. Uh, we thought the city of Byron had done this already. And when we rolled ours out, we found out the city of Byron had not done anything yet. I don't know whether they've, they've done it now. And, and I don't think one of Robbins has. And my, my city manager is, is getting a lot of uh, Kickback, uh, hit, hit back. I don't want to say kickback. That's that don't sound good. But but um, uh, the managers from all over the place are hitting at him about the hazardous pay, and we've ha we are having our attorney to look into it to make sure that Dima in it is in fact going to reimburse us on that because if we if they don't then we'd be in trouble. Um, based on what we read, the hazardous pay. Um, we think would be included. Now, the others, what they are saying is, is that they, especially with our frontline people, when we are talking about um, uh, uh, firemen, police officers, police, our public work people don't get paid much anyway. But uh, when we're talking about that, they, they, are, they are saying out there that they pay their employees well enough um, for them not to need hazardous pay when they do their duty. We disagree with that. We are putting our people on the front line. We are exposing them and their families. And, um, and so this is one of those times wherein if nobody else does it, we made a decision to go ahead and do this. And, and we hope it's not gonna last forever. Um, of course, if it's gonna last forever, then we'd have to do something totally different. But what we are doing is time and a half pay, which is essentially, uh, the same as overtime is what, what we are doing. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank I mean, you, Mayor. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chairman. I'm sorry. Um, I was going to um, say that, you know, I think um, 
uh, I agree a lot with uh, everything the mayor said, um, um, but I wanted to, to make sure that we are we understood how we were going to approach this hazardous pay um, from, from, from the legal standpoint and from how we're going to uh, get the funds and everything um, for that, which may be a little different than what I'm not sure uh, of what the mayor was speaking on. Um, uh, go ahead, attorney. Well, what I was going to say is, Mayor, I'm 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 a I'm a part of the um that city manager discussion page as well, and I've I've seen where it's played back and forth. You right. know, there are quite a few that are opposed, a lot that are in favor of it. I was also on the um, the GEMA call the other day when the discussion came up about reimbursement on hazardous pay, and I'll be quite honest with you, I'm not certain that uh, it, it all would be reimbursed, and that is why. I went with the method that we've selected here of providing $100 per week because I think that's something that's sustainable and I think that the commission can afford to do it even if GEMA doesn't come back uh, later on to reimburse it. Um, I was very concerned with, you know, some of the formulas I've seen out there with, you know, paying people time and a half because I didn't think that was sustainable. I took a look at um, what we're paying our people and, 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 if we went with the time and a half formula, we'd probably be paying people, you know, $400 a week in addition to what they're doing. So what we did was we decided to take a, a different approach with a flat fee of $100, uh, taking into consideration that our people are not always engaged with others and, and in a dangerous situation, but also understanding that we are asking them to to respond. I mean, like the folks in the gas department, they don't have a choice. They absolutely have to enter homes. And we're working diligently to make sure that they are protected. Uh, so what we did was we, we took a step back. I took a look at all the information that the city managers were discussing uh, across the state. And I tried to come up with what I thought was uh, a, a way to handle this that um, um, that was economical to us. And I thought that we could handle it in-house, even if FEMA decided not to reimburse on it. And to be quite honest with you, I think it's gonna to be tough uh, to get FEMA to reimburse on anything that's um, not beyond 40 hours a week. So at $100, I think we're, we can handle that. I think we've done some numbers and, and based on our staffing levels and people who are in and out, I think we'd probably end up spending somewhere around 35,000 or so on this program. I like the way that is stated because it's very specific. The amount that's given per week and how long it's going to be given. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, I think uh, also your IT people too, you didn't say IT, you said cash, but IT people have to go inside people's houses. But, uh, but also, um, I think the structure with GEMA is they pay 75%. We may not get all reimbursement. We get from FEMA, we'll get 75%. Hopefully we're still praying for that. And then if FEMA does anything, uh, it may be the other 25%. I doubt if FEMA would do anything for the, for the city. However, I, I, I have to mention this. One sheriff deputy has tested positive uh, for the virus and has been um, quarantined and what have you. Two EMTs have um, had tested positive and had to be self quarantined. We have uh, people uh, that's, that's, and our our people are getting out there having to do the same thing on the front line. They got families, um, and we don't want to be like the city of New York, where in 50 police officers call in sick and don't come in to work and all of that kind of stuff, because we are saying to them it's out of a sense of duty that they got to do that. And um, and so I, 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 I um, she's looking at me like she's saying it's time to shut up. Uh, <laughs> but it's out of a sense of duty that we think we, we need to do that. And I'm and I'm gonna pray that we get reimbursed for it. If not, Martha gonna pull out her checkbook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor Commissioner Thompson. You have any uh, questions or uh, for this hazardous pay? I think the hazardous pay is very good. Um, just to say $100 is not a whole lot, but it's much more than, than 
they're getting. So we, we, we're we thankful. I, I concur. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Honeycutt, any, uh, you want to weigh in, any discussion on the hazardous pay? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I just would like to commend staff on, on both of these issues. I didn't say that a while ago, but, but I appreciate what y'all done and uh, what you're trying to do for the employees and, and for our customers too. Thank you very much. I thank all of you. Um, if there's no further discussion, um, we'd like to get a, a Mr. Motion. Chairman. Yes, yes, sir. Um, you'd asked if, if Legal had looked at it. Charles may have looked at it. I, uh, I did not know that that this item was uh, going to be addressed. And I'm curious as to what the the mayor thinks the the legal issue is. If it's a wage hour concern, um, you know, I that that's one thing. But if your concern is the legality of getting reimbursed, I think you go into it with the idea that you're not going to get reimbursed. You know, that you're doing this as uh, as a business decision in order to uh, provide the best service you can to the community and part of providing that services is ensuring that the people who as the mayor said who are on the front lines are uh, taken care of yeah I agree if we could if we could if we could speak that way and and had hadn't had the challenges we've had in the last couple of years um, but I, 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 I know the first thing, John Q. Taxpayer is going to say it's where you're going to get the money from, and my answer is it's going to be reimbursed. I hope when we when we did a declaration of an emergency, um, that should put us in line with being able to get some things reimbursed. It's not just the pay that we are addressing; we are addressing other things too. So um, yeah, we we've got to we kind of answer to more than what you have to answer to. Of course, now of course you answer to your customers, and I I know that. But the taxpayers are, they are bigger bullies than, the, oh, I didn't mean to say that, Bob. Those taxpayers can be bigger bullies than customers can be. And uh, and so we got to have an answer for them, and that is my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like, to, I'd like to announce really quickly, I know you had, some of you had some questions about the governor's executive order. It is, it has been uploaded to the website. Is that correct, Kathy? You got it? You got it? What is the website for it? Sorry, I muted. Muted. Yes, it's on gov. Um, gov. Georgia. Gov. We'll we'll make sure that we send everybody a, a PDF um, a little after this meeting today, so you all have it um, in your in your email files. Thank you. I'm I really am interested in seeing if he addressed because he. He did some conflicting things in his announcement yesterday, and we were waiting to see in print if he straightened that out. Because in some places he is saying he was saying some businesses could remain open, other businesses saying they got to close. And so my office, my phone is ringing off the hook uh, with Bluebird people saying, um, you know, uh, we're at risk. But at the same time, I'm getting a document that the president kind of. Um, the president kind of uh, gives uh, an exclusion for those kinds of businesses. And if the governor does make that happen, then certainly I don't want to make it happen. That's why I'm anxious to get it seen. Okay. And All right, thank way, you, Mayor. By the, in, way, in, by the way, there was not an a employee that tested positive at Bluebird. They did shut down one day, but nobody tested positive. Okay. Thank right. you for that, Mayor. Thank you. Any, any other discussion? Um, um, Attorney Bentley or Attorney Jones? I have any, other, any other commissioners? Any any discussion? Any further? All right. I thank you so much. Uh, now on the COVID nineteen hazardous pay, uh, we need a motion. I so move. Motion. Oh, go ahead. Second. Second. I hear a motion. Do I hear a second? second. I'm, I I made the motion. Rose, you seconded. I seconded. I did. I don't know whether okay. you. Okay, I think I hear this. Uh, I I think I hear Doctor uh, Doctor Johnson, Commissioner Johnson's motion, and Commissioner Thompson's second. Is that what I'm hearing? 
It's that, that's what I heard. Okay. We have been properly motion and second, and um, now we call for a vote. All in favor by a show of hands. Keep them up so Miss Penny can see you. I got it. You got it. All those yep. that uh, are, are, are not in favor of the same sign, show of hands. You got all that, Miss Penny? Yep, I got it. All right, thank you so much. Um, we are moving forward on the next agenda agenda item, and that's the uh, Southwest Peach Project Waiver Extension. General Manager, would you care to weigh in on this? Yes, I'm, I'm having some technical issues, so I'm unable to pull it up right now. But in essence, um, you guys had issued a waiver um, on on the connection fees on this for the Southwest. Uh, peach uh, customers um, that waiver expired on um, April the 1st I reached out to you guys earlier in the week and asked if it was okay for me to administratively extend um, that waiver for an additional 90 days uh, due to COVID-19 and since we were having a call meeting today I thought it would be best if I officially make that request and you guys take some formal action. Okay, any discussion? Attorney Bentley, uh, any any legalities we need to worry about on, on making that extension? No, I would support that. I apologize, guys, I had, had, had issues with my internet connection, but I'm back now. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, okay. I, I think I've got uh, some of the information now. The, the way was, I think it's, well, no, I don't have it. I think it's a thousand dollars connection fee and one hundred and seventy-five dollars for the disposal of the uh, septic tank waste, uh, which worked out to be uh, eleven hundred and seventy-five dollars. We're waiving for an additional ninety days. I do apologize. I was having some 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 technical issues. Okay. Any discussion from uh, any of our commissioners on the Southwest Peaks project waiver extension? Dr. Johnson, anything you um, like to add or discuss on that? Oh, I'm just elated. Okay, uh, Commissioner Commissioner Thompson, do you have anything that you'd like to um, uh, weigh in on the Southwest Peach project? No, I'm just sure that all the citizens will um, will enjoy that 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 waiver and that and you know, it's 90 days, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Commissioner Honeycutt, any discussion on, on um, the Southwest Speech Project? No, sir. Okay, Mayor, do you have any um, any any discussion, any questions or concerns about well, it? I, I had done that on my response, but I think it's an excellent <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, seems like we are moving in the right direction. Okay, uh, we need a motion. I so move. Uh, Motion second, second uh, Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Thompson. Motion second. Yes. Got it, Ms. Finney? And um, so we have proper motion and second. We're moving on for a vote. By a show of hands, those are in favor. Um, let's give us a, 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 a live streaming wave. I got it. You got it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Penis. We thank you all. The um, uh, Southwest Peach Project Waiver Extension has been a motion, proper motion, voted and approved. Any other discussion um, you may have? Anything else you may have, um, General Manager? No, I just wanted to, 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 to tell you all I appreciate you taking these proactive measures to help the uh, our, our, our citizens and rate payers. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Well, I, I like to express my uh, support for our management team. We didn't just pull numbers out of the sky. That our um, budget and also uh, what we could afford, where we could get the money from. In other words, you presented to us solid information 
which made it easy for us to say yes. And I just would like to thank the whole management team and uh, wish every one of us Godspeed because this we're fighting something that, that we can't see. And uh, it impacts all of us. We all have families, what is one, well, I consider a family one person <laughs> because you got other nieces and nephews and everything may be elsewhere. And then, you know, go on uh, with a bigger families than that. But we all need help at some point. And I think that this is an excellent start based upon excellent management and Thank you, Johnson, uh, Commissioner Johnson. Um, I thank you guys. Thank everybody for tuning in that, that we're able to um, view us live on our first, our first live um, meeting. And um, if we have anything else, attorneys, do you have anything uh, before we close our meeting? Any of the commissioners? I do not. Chairman, I've got one programming note. Uh, the live stream is cut out several times during our meeting, but we're recording it uh, here on site and we'll upload the full um, uninterrupted video shortly after the meeting completes. And we'll Great. also be uploading that to YouTube as well. Right. Great. All right. Thank you, guys. I know we're, we're like I say, this, drastic time. Mr. Thompson had one more comment, Mr. Chairman. This, Go ahead. It, 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 it really doesn't pertain to, um, you know, what we've discussed thus far, but I would like to just ask um, um, Mayor Williams, they are giving away, um, are giving out vegetables tomorrow at the Festival Park, and it's going to take place at three o'clock on uh, tomorrow. Three? What? You it's going to be at three o'clock, yes. <laughs> Okay. And tell me, would that be in line with um, a staying at home? Oh no, um, I think I think his um, his shelter in ordinance will not start until what midnight tomorrow night. I think it's tomorrow night. It's tomorrow night. I think. Um, I don't think he said noon yesterday. I think he said tomorrow night, midnight tomorrow night. So yeah, uh, they got the vegetables. I'm going out to get some. All, All right. right, I thank you. I thank you guys. I'll, um, we we need to move on with this stream because uh, we, we want to make sure we get it all recorded and we want to get it all out. And because uh, we need to try to get our, our, our look out for our, our citizens and and they need the vegetables and need to get and keep the utilities on. Um, right. uh, I'm I'm going to take this opportunity to thank everyone that was able to view us, participate um, in this, all of the commissioners, Commissioner Thompson, Commissioner Johnson, Commissioner Honeycutt and Mayor. We thank y'all, Attorney Bentley, Attorney Jones, of course the, the A-team, um, Jason Clay and, 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 and Ms. Penny and Ms. Martha. And um, I, I want to I want to thank everybody. Miss Kathy, we cannot go without you. We know that. But uh, I want to thank everyone. And uh, Zach, you're always in the background, but we know you got the backup. But we want to thank everybody, all of the citizens of Fort Valley, all of our customers, all of Peach County, our family, our friends, our neighbors, and strangers that walk down the street. We thank y'all for coming and enjoying viewing us on our first live utility commission call me and at this point um, i want to before we before we uh dismiss everybody if anybody wants to because the governor just got off he finished the web the uh website i mean the uh raphael just texted to me uh if you want to write this down and and leave and go and hear what he said it is www dot w fxl.com slash news slash state dash news slash Kemp dash releases 
statewide shelter dash shelter dash statewide dash shelter in place and they've got dashes in between all of those shelter dash in dash place dash executive dash order so if anybody wants to go back and and see um that um i think it would be worth watching thank you mayor i'm sure um uh, mr maddox will probably have it on the heaven on the city's page and yeah. i thank you all i thank all the updates you gave us mayor I thank everybody um Ms. martha Ms. zach thanks for putting it all together and remember let's shelter let's stay in place wash your hands everybody the community stays together prays together we pray together to stay together okay and the first thing i always think about is if we look at everybody we're all in this together by fort valley for fort valley i thank you all and at this time i consider this meeting adjourned thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good job, Zach. Okay, our broadcast you, has ended. This was fun. Good job, Zach. <laughs> it was an adventure. <laughs>